Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to talk more about circuit analysis and in particular today we're going to talk about mesh analysis. Mesh analysis is sometimes called loop analysis and you'll see why when we get into this in a couple minutes. But we talked last week about another type, the nodal analysis. And these are somewhat similar in that they use simultaneous equations such as Kirchhoff's voltage law and Ohm's law. But where they differ is mesh analysis does not use Kirchhoff's current law. So not using that, it gives us a different way to look at things and we can solve some circuits that have less unknown variables and less using less simultaneous equations. So let's get on with it. All right, the first step in our mesh current analysis and the reason it's sometimes called the loop current analysis is we have to envision where the current loops are. So we'll call this over here current loop I1 and this will be current loop I2. So what we need to do is we need to determine the direction of the current flow. And in this case, the current flow is in this direction. And then over here, the current flows in the opposite direction. Hence the name mesh analysis, because if you were to look at these two current loop current flows, they would appear to mesh together like a set of gears. Okay, now that we've done that, we need to label our supposed polarities. So with our battery, we have plus and minus, and then R1 also has plus and minus. Over here, battery 2 plus and minus, R3 plus and minus, and then R2, if we follow the directions we can see that R2 is going to be plus and minus in that direction. If we start on our left hand loop, our left hand circuit, and use Kirchhoff's voltage law, we can work out an equation that says minus 28 plus 2 times I1 plus I2 plus 4 I1 equals 0. Okay? You have to notice here is that the middle of this equation uses the sum of the mesh currents as the current through resistor R2. That's important we can simplify the equation by distributing our terms in the parentheses. So we say minus 28 plus 2 I1 plus 2 I2 plus 4 I1 equals 0. And then we can combine our like terms and say minus 28 plus 6 I1 plus 2 I2 equals 0. I forgot my 0 up there, didn't I? Sorry about that. So we now have our simplified equation for the left-hand loop. And if we do the same equation and simplify it for the right-hand loop, we end up with minus 21 minus 3i2 plus 7 equals 0. So now we have our two equations based on our two current loops. And we can now solve them. We can say 6i1 plus 2 I2 equals 28. 
minus 21, I'm sorry, minus 2i1, <coughs> excuse me, minus 3i2 equals minus 7. And then we solve those two equations, which is pretty simple, and we say I1 equals 5 amps, and I2 equals minus 1 amp. Now, I know I did a little bit of a, of a shortcut here in the right-hand equation, but it, it's, it's the same thing. We just simplified it down to here and to here. And one of the ways you're going to find this is a very useful way of solving circuits is if you're forced to do it without a calculator, which you may be if you are taking uh, electrical engineering classes in school. Also keep in mind these are mesh currents, they're not branch currents. So, you know, just something to keep in mind there and everything will work out really nice. I hope you learned a little something from this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment and share. And don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. And a big thanks to you for watching. I appreciate it. That's it. I am out. Peace.